All right, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Tony Shen. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to work with samples. In fact, I'm gonna give you five tips on how to work with samples using FL Studio stock plugin. So we're not gonna use any crazy like Serato sample chops or use any like weird effects. Um, we're gonna stick with everything within FL Studio, which is perfect for beginners or anyone not willing to spend that much money on plugins. The reason we're going in samples is because I feel like it's one of those skills that is every producer should just learn because that's where like hip hop really began, right? Like it started out with samples. And also um, it's just really handy to have because you don't need much to make a fire beat with samples. Like you just need to learn how to chop it up and how to utilize it correctly. So it's like very, very versatile for you to have. With that being said, I also have a very special announcement. We just hit 1000 subscribers. As a sign of appreciation, I am releasing my melody kit which is free for you guys to download right now. It's in the link in the description below. It's called Neon. Now it's only available for like a limited amount of time. So depending on when you watch the video, you might not be, it might not be available to you, but for all of my subscribers, as of now, it's free for you guys to get on um, the download link is below, which is actually really handy because we're gonna use a lot of these samples for the tutorial today. So let's get straight to it. So these five tips range from like pretty simple to more advanced. So feel free to skip to like the more advanced sections if you guys already know how to do some of these things. But the first tip is to normalize. So a lot of times when you're working with melody kits and like you're just, you just wanna grab an individual sample. Like for example, this is the entire loop combined together. But say you just wanted to grab the pad and work with the pad, you, like you don't want the bass. A lot of the times these sounds are gonna be leveled for you. So since there's a bass, in that sample altogether already. The other sounds are kind of like lowered so it doesn't just overpower the bass and, and topple the bass over, right? Because typically you want the bass to kind of cut through. So like this is kind of like, say you just wanted to work with the pad. Um, this is kind of soft, right? Like if I just routed it to the mixer, there's not that much gain to work with. So obviously, you know, you could turn up the gain like this, but say you wanted it to be a little bit louder anyways, what you can do is normalize the region. So what that does is essentially it expands it to fill the entire region. So now you have a lot more gain to work with. Like that's obviously a little too loud, right? So now when you, you know, route it through your effects and you add effects on top of that, like you're gonna have enough gain to achieve the best sounds with your effects. So if you wanna increase the alt, like the input gain of your sample, um, a good, good way to do that is to normalize it. Now you do want to be careful because a lot of times when you're working with actual like live sample instruments, like someone's playing a saxophone or something, if you normalize it, it might amplify the room noise, which might not be that desirable. So you do want to be a little bit careful when normalizing, but um, in most cases you should be fine doing it. Now my second tip is how you can fit certain samples to the tempo. Now if you look at the sample tempo here, it's 122 BPM. But say you want it to be 130 BPM, right? How do I change this sample and make it 130? Like you want the project tempo to be 130, or maybe you, you want it even faster, like 160, something substantially different. How do you fit this sample to be the tempo of your project? Well, there's a few ways you could do this, right? Um, first way is you can, uh, you can click here and then fit to tempo and then you wanna type in your BPM, and then you wanna type in the BPM of your of your actual sample. So in this case, it's 122. Let's just type 122. And then now it's fit to your tempo. Right, and then you just wanna make sure that your mode is on auto. I think when you automatically fit it to the tempo, like you, you do the way we just did, it automatically defaults it to auto. What auto does is essentially like, cause when you change the tempo, sometimes it will change the actual pitch of the sample. So what auto does is it just maintains the same amount of pitch, but stretches the tempo to like a different BPM. Now say you don't know the actual tempo of your sample. Like say you just grab your sample, you just loop the random like vinyl record and you don't know what the tempo is. You can also fit it manually. So what you wanna do is first, you might wanna get rid of this grid mode because you're gonna do a lot of adjusting and then make sure your stretch mode is on and then just turn on the metronome and you can just manually match the tempo. So. So obviously, you know, that's a little bit slow, so just fit it. 
sometimes you want to look for reference points. So like obviously here's the end of the sample. So you would want that to align with the end, right? But you know, you could you could just manually drag this. And just turn on the metronome. So this offers more flexibility, but also notice how the pitch of your sample also changed. Right? Um, what you want to do is set this mode to auto, like I mentioned earlier, and that will stretch it and maintain its original pitch. So that's number two, how to fit your sample to the tempo. Okay, tip number three is pitching your samples. So say you only have access to one sample, like this is the only sample you have, and you wanna work, use that sample for the entire beat. If you just play the sample the way it is originally, it gets really repetitive and boring. So what you can do is pitch it around, right? Like first, let me just get rid of this giant tail. <laughs> what you can do is pitch it around and just change pitches and work with the pitch and just do different things by pitching the sample differently. First thing you could do when it comes to pitching your, your sample is just do key, key changes, right? So first you wanna do is make, make it unique. What that allows you to do is manipulate the second pattern without it affecting your first pattern. So like if you wanted to you know change the, make this a little bit louder for some reason, like this wouldn't change the actual volume of the sample. Right, let's let's reset this though, because we want to work, work with pitch, right? So what you can do is um, first is just modulate it to a different key, right? So say this is one key, right? And then here maybe this is like the B section of your beat. Um, you can pitch it up um, like five semitones, and that'll be a perfect fit. So that will just modulate the key and just turn your beat into a whole different key, and that could you know offer some type of like transition or just create some type of tension that could be really cool within a beat. Now the second thing you, you could do is actually layer these two together and then pitch it up an octave. So first you have the original sample and then you have to sample on top of that. And what you can do is kind of cut out some frequencies so that they don't clash. Um, and then use it for a different uh, purpose. Now the key to making it sound good, cause like sometimes when you layer the same sample over, it's not gonna sound good. It's just gonna sound a little bit muddy and like, you know, not clean because you're literally laying the same sound on top of itself. What you can do to make it sound good is change the purpose and where it sits within the beat. So like for your original sound, you might just use it as like a bass, right? Like that, you know. You... But this, you might use it as like something a little bit more wide and something that just widens the whole beat. So first you do want to cut out the EQ, just make sure they don't clash that much in terms of frequencies. But then this, you can add some other effects. Like for example, um, a delay. And then maybe add some chorus to change the, the sound, like the actual texture of it. Now see when you layer it, right? It kind of adds a little bit more to the sample. Like maybe for the A section, you just have your original sample playing. And then when the chorus comes, you have these two layered playing together. It just sounds a lot more. And now it just sounds like there's a lot more depth and texture to the sound. And that would be perfect for like a hook or a chorus. So that's tip number three. Tip number four, I'm going to teach you how to add melodies on top of your sample. So say you only have the sample, you have this pad, right? You have this pad, this like spacious pad, and then you're thinking like, what melodies could I add on top of this? I'm gonna show you how to do it. So, so let's just assume a few scenarios. First, like you already know the key, like in my kit, I tell you the key for every sample. So it's like a lot easier to add. So obviously A minor, you could just, you know, pull up an A minor scale, like say, you know, just work with, with like a piano or something like it's FL keys, right? <laughs> you could just pull up, just go to this tool right here and then just pull up, um, like, yeah, sure, like a minor har harmonic, right? And then just put it on A because that's what the key is. 
So you have this guide right here and like literally any note you play on this scale would sound good on top of the melody just because it's in the same key. So that's pretty easy assuming that you already know the key already. But a lot of the cases you don't know the actual key because like either A, you're pulling a sample from an obscure vinyl record or two, like the, the person making the kit just didn't label it for you, which happens a lot, right? So what you can do is to play by ear. And I always recommend you just using your ear and playing and tuning to your ear because that's like an everlasting skill that's very versatile and can get you out of any situation, right? Like when you're backed into any corner that you feel comfortable when it comes to making beats or making music in general, you can always rely on using your ears and making it sound good. So what I mean by that is, look, just listen. Inside your head, you should already be coming up with a melody that would sound good with this puzzle. Like a lot of the times we make the mistake of like the first thing we do is just come into this piano roll and we try to come up with melodies. But if you just take a few seconds to kind of like brainstorm melodies that fit to certain pads, like it will help a lot. And another tip is to sing it out so that your ear can actually hear whether it's in key or not. So. So again, to sum it up, the key to adding a melody on top of a sample that you might not know what the key is, is to just rely on your ear, right? First thing you wanna do is listen to the sample a few times and then think of a melody in your head that would sound good, right? Maybe like freestyle in your head, um, a melody, and then sing it out, like use your voice. That way your ear can actually hear the melody that you just came up with and sing it and then automatically correct it towards the sample. And then the next step is just to place whatever you sing into the piano roll and just match the sound of your voice to like the key, which I just did and demonstrated for you. All right, last but not least, I'm gonna teach you how to use the Fruity Slicer tool. So Fruity Slicer is basically a stock plugin in FL Studio that allows you to um, chop up certain samples and manipulate each slices and it's super cool. So this is basically the sample we're gonna use. It's from the Lonely UFO kit. So what you can do is just open up Fruity Slicer, so um, right here, and then just drag the sample. So first, Fruity Slicer kind of chops up like specific samples for you and automatically does it. You don't want to do that. Let's just go to beat, and what that does is it slices each individual beat by itself. So, so now you have each beat sliced. So you know how when you listen to old vintage hip hop songs, like you, you, like a lot of the samples that they use seems like chopped up. So you can achieve the same effect just by putting a sample into Fruity Slicer. So first you wanna make sure that all the tempos are kind of matched up, right? And next, um, what you can do to achieve that like all choppy effect is uh, by increasing the attack and decay time of each slices. Now the second thing you could do with Fruity Slicer is to you can link it up to a MIDI keyboard or you can even use your piano roll and just play these yourself. Like you can you know change up certain like and you can just organize by each slice and like arrange each slice differently, which is super super cool. The last thing you can do that I wanna show you with Fruity Slicer 
is you can reverse each slice individually. So say you want to reverse the first slice, right? All you have to do is click this button and it reverses just the slice. Right? It's, isn't that super cool? It just gives you a lot of control when it comes to manipulating your samples and then using each slice individually and you can get super creative when it comes to like just playing with these slices and then um, just chopping up the sample in however way you want. So those are my five tips for working with samples. I hope you guys learned a lot from this. If you learned something and if you're new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. It really means a lot to me. And thank you again for 1000 subscribers. So yeah, by the time you guys see this video, the Neon Kit should be available for all of you, you guys to get to download for free as a sign of appreciation. But that's all I have for today. Thank you guys so much. Peace out.